Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about the cloud provides benefits to the global 2000 and this technology will also help smaller competitors drive slow movers out of the business and make sure you stay until the end of the show to get Dave's top three tips for organizations. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back on the show this week and looking forward to this topic. It's uh, something I've been talking about a lot lately. Yeah, exactly. Uh, are we heading for the apocalypse for the global 2000s that's driven by cloud computing? Yeah, I think we're, we're I wouldn't call it an apocalypse. Um, <laughs> I think that we're heading for the fact we're going to see a huge change in the global 2000, just kind of a churning going forward. And we're going to see a lot of the upstarts, which uh, normally wouldn't give the larger, you know, trillion dollar companies much of a run for their money, uh, a run for their money and be able to use tech as a force enabler to kind of uh, basically whittle away their business around them. And of course, the best examples we, we have of that are Airbnb for the hotel industry and Netflix for the entertainment industry and Uber for the transportation industry and the tax industry. But you know, we're going to see healthcare, we're going to see finance, we're going to see a lot of these, certainly retail with Amazon.com, a lot of these big players that have been traditional brands that we've been dealing with for 100 years, you know, kind of fall by the wayside because they can't keep up and change as quickly as the market's changing. And their competitors are, in essence, eating away at their market share by leveraging technology as a force enabler. I mean, I'll give you an example. Um, I know of a company, they deliver everything in, a, in its own shipping container when people are ordering supplies. And that shipping container has a sensor in it, which will basically count every time something is taken out of the container for supplies that they need, say healthcare, other things. And then they automatically reorder with the customer's permission once they feel the container is, has been emptied or nearing empty. So in essence, they're running inventory for their clients, which typically have a 90 day um, reorder rate and typically run out of stuff and yell at, you know, yell at people internally before things get ordered. And that's an example of kind of automating uh, success you know, into their processes. And I'm seeing hundreds of things like this, these great ideas where people are leveraging technology, in this case, RFID, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi technology, which is commoditized uh, as a key enabler to provide them with a differentiator and so they can charge more for their products and services and make more in the market. And I think that the larger companies right now just don't see the value of the technology that they should. They understand there's value there and they are having projects that work on it. But with very few exceptions, I think they're whistling past the graveyard and they're going to be in trouble in five years. Yeah, I really do agree with you that there's not enough quick adopters out there. I mean, to throw it back at you, giving giving this a timeline for the global 2000s that aren't, or you know, the uh, specific uh, industry ex or leaders in the global 2000s where their markets are being heavily disrupted, what's what's the timeline look for them if they, if they don't get on board soon and, and get things moving? How how quickly do you think that their businesses will almost be completely disrupted and and no marketplace at all? Yeah, it depends on the industry, of course, but I think five to 10 years is really kind of the, uh, uh, is where it is right now. That means they have to start now. They can't turn on a dime to get anything going in the global 2000. It's going to take a year for them to think about it, you know, three years to implement and then uh, one year to deploy it and do so. It's going to take a tremendous amount of money. It's good. They're going to need some outside assistance. They're going to need some talent in the company to kind of change things around. But more importantly, you're going to need to change their culture. I think the limitations of the cultures are really what's holding them back more so than their technology enablement and their ability to kind of move in different directions. So they have to understand it's about taking risks. It's about questioning. It's about uh, the art of the possible, um, the ability to kind of uh, figure out what's possible in their market and what they can do with enabling technology. And if they don't do that, someone else is going to figure it out. And quite frankly, we're in a state right now where we can shift markets or shift products or shift providers in a very short period of time. It doesn't take three or four years like it used to, you know, 15 years ago. Uh, we can do it in a matter of seconds, get these suppliers online because everything's automated, everything's electronic. Yeah, very much so. And, and that leads us on, on nicely to the, your top three tips for organizations and potentially the, the global 2000s on what they need to implement. I know we've covered off a few already just then, but you know, what are the top three that you would, uh, you, you would be pushing right now? 
Well, the, the basic one is leverage technology is a force multiplier. No matter, I mean, I, I, it's, real, it's weird feeling sorry for global 2000 companies that make billions in profits every year, but I kind of feel sorry for them based on what a lot of them are going to experience in the next few years. And so understand that technology, technology is your friend and your competitors are going to use it against you, or you can use it against your competitors to penetrate your market, in essence, disrupt a market that's being disrupted by other disruptors. Um, Next would be never underestimate the small players. I think that uh, Amazon.com got to where they are because, quite frankly, back in the dot-com era, I used to have conversations with larger retailers, and I was almost laughed out of the boardrooms uh, because I said this online stuff is a real threat. You're not paying taxes. They're getting they're getting better at shipping. Logistics is typically better than you guys, and they would tell me that people want to go into brick-and-mortar stores and touch and feel something that it's never going to work. Well, they were wrong about that. And the same with Uber and the same with lots of, same with Netflix and, you know, its ability to kind of be blockbuster and all these things that go on. And so we're just going to see lots of instances where this is going to be an exciting change, but it's going to be a change nonetheless. And I kind of feel for the employees of those companies and people who own stock in those companies because they're going to be uh, in a bit of a hurt for a while. And the final thing is plan, plan, plan. So you can't get to this place unless you do some strategic planning. And if you're managing by magazine and running to the next tech, tech trend that's going on, you're not leveraging technology efficiently. And so get those plans in place, get the right people and the talent inside these organizations to make it happen. Yeah, great three tips there, Dave. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you being part of the C-Suite show this week. Oh, my pleasure. Everybody have a good week. Thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on future shows and the previous ones. And you can catch David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. All the links are in the description box below. Thanks for watching and look forward to catching up with you next week.